How are you doing today? I don't know that uh, whether the last minute has been live or not. Might have just jumped right into now. I was doing something a little bit different on OBS. And uh, anyway, thank you all for being here. Welcome back. It's a Monday, I know. Everybody's always excited about Mondays, right? But I want to just thank you for taking the time to be here. It's always awesome to see everybody here in our community uh, where we're working on old tech, saving things. I see a lot of people in the chat already. Thank you, Belmont. The best moderator showing up already. You're awesome. Ronnie, welcome. Jake, welcome. NDPX, James, Boone, welcome. And uh, we're about to get the show started here. And just as the thumbnail and title is stating to you, we're going to be working on the JVC D series. This is a different D series than I've ever worked on before. Of course, we got the jazz in the background to try to accentuate the mood. <clears throat> anyway, we're coming back from a wonderful weekend. And um, it's, for me, I get real excited this time of year. I love college basketball. My favorite team plays tonight. And if they win, they guarantee themselves a spot in the real NCAA tournament. So I'll be ecstatic about that to see what happens tonight for the JMU Dukes. But that's not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> Again, we're talking about the JVC. So uh, we'll let the chat get rolling a little bit more. And we're going to get, uh, I'm going to show you some details on this CRT. I do plan to have a video on said CRT um, in, I don't know whether it'll be in March or early April, but it will be here. Hey, Brandon, welcome. And so that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop a top again. And we will see right here. Um, first off, this is the chassis, I have it right here. And uh, before we get to work on it, you can see that anode right there. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you more about this. I'm going to show you uh, that it it this particular model, the AV2 or AV32 D303, actually does zap. And I put one of my footage uh, of that zap on Twitter, and so you could see. Um, we're going to see a clip from that discharge. And then I'll also show you the condition of this television because it was it's very dirty. So we're going to uh, do that. But if you have not already, please do me a favor. Please hit the like button. It does help. It does help the uh, algorithm. Let everybody know the show's going. Hey, Electron Ash. Welcome, buddy. So and Tandy one. Welcome. I don't know how much these would have cost back in the day. Uh, not really sure. Imagine this size of one would have been, you know, I'm, I'm sure it would have been close to $1,000 back in the day, probably. Somewhere between $700 to $1,000 is a guess. But who knows? If somebody does know, let us know in the chat there. All right, here we go. Sorry, I was just catching up on the chat. So again... Here we go. Let's let's take a look. First off, here's the camera views for today. But we're going to start with this Twitter feed. And to do that, I'm going to turn down. No, you know, I'll probably leave the jazz. We'll turn that just a little. And I'm going to pause our jazz music for a second because I want you to hear the pop here. Maybe maybe if it shows up, we'll see. Uh, Anyway, my Twitter timeline is here, and first off, let's go down and look. This is the set. It's just a lovely large JVC 32 inch. I can't actually, the reason I'm showing you pictures of the outside and these clips is I can't carry this thing and fit it in down in uh, the bunker down here safely, so it, it's staying up in the garage. and. I've got the parts we're working on down here. Now, uh, here's the exact model. This is from April 2000, or yeah, 02. And let's see if there's anything else important. It's A107 is the actual chassis number there. And there's your input build out. So this has just about everything you want. 
you've got component and then you've got audio out and this input to see it shares again component video and this composite video right here so you have to go into the menu and select whether you want it to be component or composite and then you feed in the audio with that and then you've got s video or composite uh, for input one and then there's an input on the front that is just composite and stereo audio and let's see do i have a nice little clip of it let's see what this clip is this is from uh, twitter yesterday let's make sure the quality here okay there we go we have good quality we have at least 720p let's see all right here's this d series i'm letting it warm up a little bit cole's pissed off at me because i won't let him come out here you can hear him in there barking it looks pretty good i've not actually had the 303 variant in the shop, so I'm going to try to do some uh, some documentation. No, oh, Cole, relax in there, buddy. Um, but it's an interesting, interesting set. It's got that extreme bubble tube there, right? Shadow mask. Gosh, Cole's not happy. Also, this one has like some great inputs, right? Got composite. I'm actually just using S video for ease of use. All right, I think that's down. about it, pretty much. Right? Mission, mission. And um, we'll see how good we can make it look. Yeah, that's pretty much it for that clip. So there you go. That's that's what it is when it's the condition it's in the shop. Now I'm going to show you. Uh, let's see. That's after I discharge it. So let's go ahead now. I'm going to show you the discharge. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, Cole was, was pissed off in that clip. He's actually sleeping right here next to me, so it's even funnier to watch. All right, don't, don't do that. Let's do this. Let's hit pause. No, that's supposed to be paused. All right, we're going to pull this one up. All right, you're supposed to be on 720. Oh, goodness. Go ahead, get yourself back up to 720. Okay, let's make sure that's on 720. I'm not... Whoops. Interesting. Nope, I want it full size. <laughs> This stupid program. What's up? That. What's up with this terrible video quality? Right? It was 720 a second ago. Now it's metal? Let's see. It's not even running now. Okay, there it is. I'm not sure what the hell's going on with this thing. Let's try to get this out. Maybe it'll f Ah, there we go. Sorry about that. Goodness gracious. Having some issues there with the video setup. There we go. We're going to go in here and we'll what watch this. Metal? Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. Did you see it? You can barely hear it. Let me turn the audio up. We'll watch that part again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's probably harder to see on there, but when I... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, damn. Let's see if we can freeze it on the zap. Oh, yeah. You see it? There it is. <laughs> uh, I sound like the, like the macho man, Randy Savage, but there's the zap right there. See? Right there. There it is. Hey, Jake, thanks for the $10 super chat. Hey, I finally got all moved into my new house. Well, congratulations. I'm going to start recapping set soon. My 27D201 doesn't have any pots inside. Uh, it needs recap to fix geometry issues. Is your silver one the same? Um, yeah, you got to recap it. There's not going to be any pots in there. There's no pots on this board. It's going to be recapping. There's a vertical deflection switch, which is just like a three-way switch. Uh, mine's straight up. And uh, so it, it that's the only switch on it. Everything else is going to be done through the software. And unfortunately, the software uh, features are going to vary depending on which model it is. So the 201 is going to have different unlocked features in the menu than the 303. And, uh, so, you know, they even have different types of tubes in them. So uh, you'll have to do the same thing uh, we're going to do today. So check it out that... Uh, this should be helpful. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> uh, I guess everybody could really hear that one. But yeah, if you look at the frozen picture on your screen, that little spark of life right there, <laughs> that's that's the zap. And uh, Twitter has compressed the video to make it like 720p and and do some shit with it. But when it's in the when it's in the regular video uh, that I make for it, you'll be able to see it better. I also have another camera set up, and I didn't get to see the footage for it. Hey, Kenny. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, you got it, man. Those TBCs, dude, I have actually... Um, unfortunately, I've got two of them here, time-based correctors that are the data path to TBC-1000s, which are helpful for um, video capture and analog video vhs tape any kind of tape playback to get rid of you know, helps it it helps the timing of the signal come back and prevents frame drops etc uh, but i have two that i've not been able to get fixed they are just a mess i don't know what the heck's going on they run but they have these streaking vertical image or vertical lines that i can't get out of it and uh so unfortunately, I don't know what's going on with those. Those are just like parts ones that I've been, I've recapped it completely. I've reflowed solder on everything. I've replaced all the um, replaceable voltage regulators because a couple of theirs were blown on this one. But I don't know whether that pop on those just damaged it for good or what, but it's, uh, it's not good. All right. I'm going to show you the inside of this monitor now. Or... TV. You could look at the tube number here. We got All right, so check it out. The here's the D series 32 inch. I don't know why it's not letting me. There we go. Three to look at these changing. I guess it's on automatic. It just keeps changing my. Um, here's your tube number. I don't think that's resolution on playback. I believe when it's got nothing else on it, it's a. Uh, what do you think, Panasonic M80 JUA061X06? Check it out how nasty it is inside this thing. Look at that layer of just dust. Look at that. I'm gonna. How gross is that? Isn't that nasty? Eesh. I think yes, this, this has to be a smoker. Smoker. Because thankfully it's ventilated, it doesn't stink. To all high heaven but dang that's a lot of dust man maybe it wasn't a smoker or just super dusty wherever the heck it's been stored but the dust the dust is clinging to the cables in a way that it was like used and i mean it usually that's uh, indicative of smokers so damn i gotta get this thing cleaned up before i take it inside the shop all right, right so check it out the that. here's the d series and that's everything so far. That catches you up on all the important facts here. And so now we're at the point where we have the chassis here. I've taken the chassis, cleaned it up. And that's what I've got right here with me. So I'm going to cue that beautiful jazz music. This coal snores. Time to hit that... Jazzy jazz. Oh. It does have really good speakers, actually. All right. It actually has a pretty good audio system. A lot of those TVs did do some really interesting things with the audio. All right. Thank you again for dropping by. Let's get in here. We're gonna go. Uh, if we if we look at this. If I show you this uh, board, where's my pen? Right here. So this neck board, it only has a single capacitor right here. So that's gonna get changed. C3391, folks, that is a is that I don't know what brand that is just from looking at it 10 volt 220 
I don't think I have any 10 volts, so we're going to go up to 16 volt 220. Microfarads. Right here. Uh, so I've wrote it down. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. But I will also be reflowing, you know, solder on that entire. Yeah, this is the same one. I mean, it's not fully cleaned. You could tell it's still got some of that mess down on it. Right? I mean, look at the cable, for example. I just swept or, or took a brush to it and then blew it off with the compressed air. So that's the same board. Let this get heated up. This would be an easy one to get rid of. We're also going to reflow all the solder in here because it looks like garbage. Somebody drew a bunch of pictures on the back of the circuit board for some reason. You see all those lines? I don't know what those are supposed to mean. They're all over the place, though. Yep, there it is. So number one, I got my bag here. I'm going to just throw all these into this bag. And that's it for the neck board. Too bad they all aren't that easy. Got a big glob of... I mean, I'm guessing it looks a lot like hot glue, but it's epoxy of some sort. I'm hoping it is. It's a couple diodes tied together there. Now when you are looking at a uh, board like this one, It's mapped out, you know, just like Bjork told you all a long time ago. It's mapped out like a city. Like a lovely city. Here we go. You're gonna cruise down the city. Alright. Deflection, deflection. This is pretty typical, okay? Deflection zones. Yep. All right, so. If you guys look with me here, I'm gonna show you where the line is, okay? There's this line right here where my pin is, this white line down here. Comes under this capacitor right here, over to this side, down to here. Goes through, dude. Goes over this way. I'm gonna ride this train with you, okay? And then over here, and then it comes over here, and it cruises up this way around this transformer, including that capacitor back around this side of the board, okay? So that's that whole spot. What I just carved out for you again, that whole block is our power block. All this up here is basically our power supply. So if this was a PVM, this would be isolated onto its own board since it's a con consumer grade sale, uh, CRT. It's been incorporated onto the main board. And that's why you see like the power comes in here. Main voltage, then you have a fuse, then you have transformers and uh, transforming it down into whatever it's stepped off and needed into. Obviously you have high voltage going over here to the flyback. And then, so this area is going to get serviced, right? We're going to reflow solder on this stuff. We're going to replace these electrolytic capacitors in this area. And then if we look right next to that. 
down in this area next to that. Everything basically from that line we started at down to the flyback here over to the tuner on the left side. And so it goes under, everything under that line, then you cut over here to this point. See, it goes straight here, it goes down, cuts up this line over here, back over to this part. All of that right in there is our deflection. Every one of those is a deflection capacitor. So if you have any deflection issues, it has to be a capacitor inside of here. Changing a capacitor next to this, all this will not help anything on your image. Nope. Or heck over here if you start messing around this this is audio that's gonna do nothing to your picture this is uh i'm not even sure what this one does this is some kind of regulator it says and then over here is the tuner okay down here is the tuner and anything on this side is low voltage except for this audio block does get hot sometimes but come on it's not really that hot Okay, the picture drive stuff that gets hot is over here. This will get hot. This will get hot. This guy. Yeah, those are gonna get the hottest. Uh, this right here. All that gets hot. So that's what's burning up the capacitors, especially stuff like these down in here, these little guys. No, those aren't even capacitors, sorry. <laughs> this guy, this is a capacitor. And then, like, uh, these capacitors, right? Next to this. Suspicious. So that's how these boards broke down. Especially down here, like, these guys are probably bad. Okay. And that'll me mess with your vertical deflection. So, we don't even have to do much else. Just start pulling caps from whichever block we want to start with. Let's see. Might just be easier to start from the top. And go power first. Ooh, hello. Hello. Hello, how are you today? Take your troubles away with my FR three oh one. Gotta tickle that solder, you know? Tickle that solder. This is C. Nine one four. Fifty volt, one hundred. Eighty five. Fifty volt, one hundred. Tag it and bag it, friend. And on to the next. But you can see the art I have on the back of this chassis. I don't know. Is this a quality control thing JVC had going on? Look at that. All those markings, I'm not sure what it's about. I'm gonna have to do this one probably with the uh, a different method. Because I don't want to burn that. Let's move on over here. Let's see what we have here. 972. Twenty-five volt forty-seven. And these are all very 
typical and common capacitors you'll, that you'll find in, in CRTs, always. Now there'll be some oddballs here, but so far we've run into nothing but super common, normally stocked things. Okay, we got another one right here, 971. camera situated a little bit better here in a second. 97, 16 volt, 100. This one's actually a Nishikon. I think that's our first Nishikon. That's 971. Yep. Okay, in the bag. Let me get something. I need some hands. some helping hands in here. Oh, what are you talking about, Ash? I don't even know. You're talking about dangerous stuff, it sounds like. <laughs> are you talking about the old TVs that don't have anything isolated or have isolation transformers and they're built with live hot voltage running all throughout the chassis that's like super high voltage let's see what are we gonna get next there's a couple more over in this quadrant. We've got three more over down in here. So, get you there in that view. Let's get the big one out of the way if we can. Yeah, I don't even... I don't even work on those sets. Of course, I don't really see them that often. At all. Because those would be really old. Those are like pre-70s usually. Nine. This is a chunky cap here. 931. First chunky cap. Rubicon. 160, 100. Microfarad. It's 105 degree temperature. It's actually the nicest capacitor we've seen in this whole set so far. <laughs> yeah, people are people are quick. People are quick to like not. Um, uh... Oh, really? All right, people are quick to jump on and yell at you. It's like, uh, I feel there are infinitely, like if there's infinitely more dangerous things you could do to yourself on a CRT than just get popped honestly by discharging it the way I discharged it in that clip because look guys let's just think about it the problem with electricity is things like when you get stuck on a line of electricity and you can't let go you're frozen and voltage continues to pump and burn you okay I'm not trying to scare you or anything but that's continuous voltage when it comes to a CRT discharged voltage it's literally one poof and then it's gone so it could definitely that poof could you know make you not feel good but it's not like those where you're grabbing something and you keep getting shocked and shocked and shocked and then you're dead or vegetable status or something 
continuous voltage. But it's like a crime to say that. And I forgot which cap I took out, but I still have it in my hand. And it's right next to 973. It's not on, that's it, 973. 50 volt, 10. All right. Yeah, I, that's the thing, Ash. I've never actually heard anybody... I've heard people do it and, like, get a pop from it and, and do things like poop their pants, lose bowel control. Absolutely, Bob. <laughs> that's a... That's a very good way to put it. But at the same time, I'm not going to tell anybody to do it because it... I mean, again, you don't know how people, other people are. They could be like me have a, or have a worse heart condition than I have. Or have pacemakers, have, uh, you know, other things contributing to this. So it's better to steer on the side of caution. Plus it keeps me in business. Alright, there we go. We're hitting this line here because we're about to move down into the capacitors four. These are three right here that are for um, deflection, actually. Let me see. Yeah, so we've got these. these. Is that what I'm looking at here? No? I'm looking down here. Just one is a deflection capacitor, the C503. Okay, these other ones are not actually, they're not the kind of capacitors I want to remove. Sixty volt, one microfarad. Let me put this on a different page since it's the deflection capacitors. C five zero three one six zero volts, one microfarad. Look, these are power caps over in this block, so we're going to get rid of these next. And I'm going to use, there's a big one right here, I'm going to use um, some solder wick to take that out. C935. The good thing is, is the power ones obviously all start with nine. Nine. This one is a 25 volt 1000. Every cap so far has been pretty common in all the ones that I would stock here in the shop. So far. I don't know about that big power filter capacitor that we're going to take soon. So far, so good. We're going to go ahead and take this guy down here. It's a big one. It's a capacitor in the deflection block, but might as well just get rid of it. And see what we have here. This is a big one. Another 160 100. So that's the second one of those, actually. go baby
Now there's more over there. Nine, four, two. Uh. Four two. What are you? Fifty volt one. Microfarad. Tiny one. Isolated power block. Here we go. We got two more in this isolated power block. Now when you're on the like. Do, this particular board actually does have um, multiple types of capacitors on it. So you've got these, and then you've got the ones they call... Um, sorry. The film capacitors, the chiclet. I call them chiclet-looking capacitors. These. These don't need to be changed unless you know they're bad. But the difference between those, you'll have those on the board like this. They'll be looked like that. And then the one with um, an electrolytic capacitor has another box in between the capacitor legs. That's like, there you see that little box with the three lines in it. it looks like a barrel. That way you know you're looking at it to change those and not the other type. Nine three three sixteen volt one thousand. Thanks, James. Have a good day. There's no cap kit for this. No, you got to just go and uh, the best thing to do is just These are pretty and when you start looking at this stuff Just get 50 and 25 volt of pretty much everything right one 2.2 3.3 10 47 100 220 470 those are the microfarad ratings you need and then you go out 0 0.47 start at 0 0.47 and just go up from there do 50 like that and you could save a little money by doing 25 like that and then you'll find these other higher voltage that you need to just start grabbing that are like 160 volt and 220 or yeah 220 volts or 250 volts sorry not 160 250 not 220 but there's not, from what I understand, an actual, like, bulk order. But you could definitely go make those at, at Mauser or DigiKey. And that's how you save money on parts and always have some on stock. So here's an idea, right? You go through and you do the process that I'm doing, and then when you go order your cap kit, round up, order like lots of them instead of just one of each, you know, order lots of them, and then you'll start stockpiling it that way. And you get the bulk orders, because they do give you a price break once you start going in there and doing 10. And it's good practice. It's going to get you used to doing this, and then you can familiarize yourself and then you can get more parts because there's going to times where you're going to be looking for parts that 
are not just um, like a kitted part. You're going to be trying to find a... Uh, you'll be looking for resistors. You'll start needing ICs uh, or uh, voltage regulators, transistors. And then the more you are familiar with the website, you'll be much more comfortable going in there and looking at the parts on there. And and ordering and uh it's good practice plus it helps your margins a little bit because if you're if somebody else is putting kits together for you they have to charge you for doing that so you're actually just i mean if you do it like this you're you're it's not a huge savings but you are at the long run you're saving a bunch more than you think you would. Okay, I think that... Look at this. I think we've got the entire... power block done. Um, no, no, no. I'm sorry. We've got these over here. I forgot. These on the edge. And then we'll get the big one. Then we'll get the big one. So we've got the two edge capacitors out by this transformer. 951 and 952. Cool. All right, that one's a 16 volt 220. C952 and I know it looks like maybe there's burn on there but that's not really burn that's just there's like a coating on the board of flux I think it's like a flux coating when they factory solder these and uh, that's what evaporated a little bit it doesn't actually burn anything but oh thanks Jake for the five dollar super chat how bad are the Amazon cap and resistor kits really? I didn't even know that there were cap kits on Amazon. They all have different generic branding, but the kits all look the same. Have you tried them? No, I have not, and I would not recommend trying those at all. Um, the problem is, is if you get something that, again, you don't want to be putting, you don't want to go through all the labor of doing what we're doing and getting those kind of capacitors. I would, you could get a bad one, you could get a faulty one, you could get a out of spec one easy but if you're going from digikey or mauser which is the two i order from I, there's probably others but i'm just saying like in the united states if you have access to them or other countries i would go with them because they're only going to sell even like you could say oh well i want to say go with the cheaper ones on their website that meet your specific needs again buy worth capacitors where i'm at worth capacitors are great for 90% of the applications, especially these smaller grade capacitors. Uh, and then the larger ones go with the Rubicon or the Nishicon or the Panasonic or the hundreds of other good companies. Don't go using those Amazon kits. Unless you're somebody who wants to, but I don't see, see, Amazon's always about getting more volume sales and cheap. It's not about quality on there ever, right? So I do not believe that those products they're going to be selling there are going to be that good. It's all about cheap, so they're going to need to make it cheaper. They're going to need to cut corners by getting very bad quality capacitors. What's up, Andre? Oh, yeah, fuses. I bet fuses will blow up a ton more if you get the cheaper ones, too. And that goes for eBay, too. Actually, though, there are some times where you have to buy salvaged parts on eBay. I had to buy a couple uh, ICs that were no longer available. They have been discontinued. One guy has a thousand of them, and they're listed on eBay for $8 a pop. I had to buy two of them. They perfectly fit. They're salvaged from back old stock. He's got a ton of them, and they, they're the right part. Uh, but there's no like modern replacement for it. 
So in that case, you are stuck going with whatever you can find on the internet. But then you have to take everything like that with a grain of salt, because again, it's going to be very easy for, you know, what do you expect? It's an old part. It could be bad when you buy it. Last power capacitor is a 25 470. 25 volt 470. Look at that's perfect. It's the last spot on my page. I think that's 951, right? Yep. One neck cap. Just 11? Power caps? Alright. About halfway there. No, I don't... I, Ash, I don't agree with that either because, again... It's really a waste on some of these things to replace every capacitor on some items like this television does not need to have all the capacitors replaced in this area because they're not first off they're not high they're not high uh capacitance they're not going to get high heat so they could literally last 20 times longer at the temperatures they're sitting at than the ones over here. So theoretically, you could you could say that these may need to be replaced three times before you'd ever have to worry about replacing these. And those caps could last 50 years. Now, there are some instances where if you're in there, you need to replace all of them, right? On some boards, replace them all. Hot board, everything's old, want to do it, that's fine. But some stuff is, is it's yeah, it's a waste of everything to go and just recap all that. Yeah, I, I mean, it's you can look. There's a bell. It's almost like a bell curve, you know, a curve graph on the life of uh, capacitors and. So the less heat they're exposed to, the way longer they can last. And it's not, so it's not like a, again, a gradual, just straight line curve. It's like thousands and thousands and thousands more hours. And, but it also depends on the type of the capacitor because an electrolytic through hole like this uh, will last longer than any SMD capacitors, generally speaking. SMD technology for those electrolytic capacitors is... It's not nearly as durable. Let's get back to the... Now we're back into the deflection area. Let's see what we've got here. Got all these going. No, we've got this. I forgot. We do have to pull this one. We'll do that later on. This is the big filter cap right here, which... 200 volt 470 that may be something I have here I think yeah there's a bunch of um, things and there's ones that actually have a built-in discharge mode so you can actually just go through and uh, ESR meters that is I have a bunch of ESR meters so you can go through and just check the caps if you really want to even the ones on the other side and if any of them have dried up you can change it but you got to also remember that stuff is not affecting most of the, the stuff you're using. I'm going to start on the far end this time. In the side pin cushion area. And I believe that's 211. Uh, uh, 
C211. Sixteen volt ten UF. Do I check the B plus voltage? I usually don't adjust the B plus voltage unless it's needed to be adjusted. I tend to leave the B plus voltage alone unless I visually see an issue with the set. Just everything else that's along those lines before I just be voltage you know like focus and and I will adjust it when it's needed but it's not it could be a little bit of a range there you know if it looks worse on the exact number and a little bit off that number it looks better Five thirty three. So these are going to be twos and fives. Dog on it. What did I do? I dropped it. Here we go. Fifty volt ten. Five three three. So that's it over there. Go over here, go lower. Get the vertical deflection. Oh, this is a 400. So they're really mixing up the sequences here. Five volt or seven. That is C four. What? Let's see, it's hard to see it. Four three three. Tell you what, it does smell like a, I don't know, like a gorilla's brown hole here from this damn chassis. Whatever's covered in it. Every time I heat it up, it smells like a tasty turd cake. Crispy. 50 volt, 4.7. Zero eight. Oh, sheesh. 
to get just this block right down here which is one two three four five and then there's two more down here that should be about it no three more three more in this spot and then it's actually five it's eight more it doesn't take too long Getting this a chonky one four two eight. Twenty five volt two twenty or twenty two hundred, sorry. Two two zero zero. You'll find a lot of that specific capacitor inside uh CRTs also. It's bigger. What do I got here? Well, where are you? There it is. I was like, what am I looking at here? Uh, 523. Uh, C523. 35 volt 1000, baby. Oh my gosh, Scott! Scott, look at you, you monster. What are you doing, man? Thanks for showing up today. You didn't have to do that. I appreciate the huge $50 super chat, man. You're awesome. Beers for the Dukes game. You got it, buddy. I hope we do it tonight. Thank you. Then your big, big ass TV will be on the next uh, big ass TV stream. Scott has a amazing... Uh, big Sony KV that I'm also working on. Big one. That's going to be on a stream coming up soon. Because I've got to do a RGB mod. Scott the champ. The champ is here, baby. The champ, you know. He likes that Johnny Walker. gracious hope we get together again I know we will eventually all right 35 volt 1000 that one was extruding some stuff all right 429 is no 425 
ink on this pen, I believe. Making sure that pump stays clear. Because we've only got a couple more to go. I don't want to have to clean it before I remove the last four or five capacitors down here. If I flip this over the other way, it'll be better, easier to get to them. Yeah, that should be a little bit, a little bit simpler. Five twenty-one. Fifty volt ten. One more, and then we're off to the other side. Five two five. Thirty-five volt, one hundred. Now I don't carry like thirty-five volt one hundreds normally, so this is obviously going to be a fifty volt. And there's a lot of ones that are like sixteen volts that I don't have that I'll just use for twenty-five or twenty-five for. So remember, you can always go up in voltage without harming anything. Last three capacitors, we're gonna do it today, and then we're gonna flip around and take out the big old filter cap. Here's that switch in the vertical deflection block. And that's the only thing. And I'm sure that changes the uh, centeredness, probably, of the image. Number 432, what are you, baby? 25 volt 47. One more back there. Yeah, I don't have a 35 volt 100. That's going to be 50. That's a 35 volt 100. I believe that's everything. 
reset that switch. Yes, that's it. Come on. We just got the one big cap left. Just the one big. Right? I don't see any other ones over in this spot. And this one's gonna be good. This is the last cap right here. Let's shut this. Clean, it. Clean my pump a sec. Let's do this. Let's get this guy out of the way. We don't need you right now. Let's get our cap lists. Bag of caps. And the last one. Right here, 907. That's this big big guy here now occasionally I have gotten these to, to discharge and zap um, let's see if we can do it no nothing there Obviously, you don't want to be touching the brass when it does that, but I've definitely seen that happen a few times. These bigger caps like this. No. All right. Nothing. So, clear this guy off. Okay, I'm gonna add some fresh, fresh solder here. It's gonna be hot. Oh, that's hot. I bet. Still got a lot of solder in there. There we go. To sit and recap a television. Mm. Well, kid, what do you think? What do you think about all your life choices? 
that have led you to this key moment. This specific time in history, we find ourselves removing C-907 in such a particularly old-fashioned manner. Piece of cake, baby. Piece of cake. There we go. C-907. C-907 is 200 volts and 470 microfarads. And that's all of them. That's all of them. They gone. There we go. How glorious. There we go. So now go start dropping caps in time we got 12:45 hang on check it out we've been going for about an hour about an hour here you go that's all we really need to take out of this television it's about 25, 27 caps in there, something like that. No cake for you. What are you thinking? It's not cake time yet. It's gravy time. <laughs> Let's get some gravy. You're slinging, slinging baggies of that, right? Baggies of electrolytics. Got the good shit, man. All right. There we go, folks. Let's get some caps. See what we can accomplish together. It's gonna take longer to clean this CRT than anything else, I'm sure. Here we go, let's do it, baby. Maybe we'll go with another view for a second while I grab my caps. I got my magic wand here. See, then you find a nice lovely tray like this, and that's how you store your capacitors. In order. And then you just a piece of cake. Pull from the stock. Alright. Do 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 ba ba ba. I miss my jazz music. Oh yeah, miss my jazz music. <laughs> miss that jazzy. Jazzy jazz, here we go. Psst, 
Snackboard, here we come. We're coming for you. That's right. C3391. 250220, baby. That's what we're going for today. Let's see. Perfect job for a worth capacitor. 25 volts, 220. Upgrade in all areas that we can. Do 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 do. Here we go. C9931. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Let's get these legs. Get that out of the way. my snips off. Some tiny stuff on this board. I'm gonna reflow the solder gently on it. Happy, happy little solder joints. You don't want to leave your iron down too long. Some of these points have plastic associated with them. You don't want to melt that plastic. But you do need to do this to a neck board. Here we go. Oh, you like those fumes, do you? I'm giving them to you, not to me. I'm giving them all to you, okay? If there was a smell on YouTube, what do you think you'd smell right now? Can you imagine what it smells like? Those vapors are coming straight into your face this time. I don't know how I made this work, but it's like the camera is my face, and instead the fumes are attracted to that instead of my face like it normally is. <sighs> I'm blowing it that way too, giving it a little help. Flow solder if you want that CRT to glow forever. There we go.
All right. I'm not going to do these surface mount components. Obviously, the through hole are the only thing I'm concerned about in this manner. Beautiful. What a finish there. Still going here. What do you think it really is? Silicone? Yeah, it is. It would have melted by now. Since that's already been reflowed, I'm not worried about that. That is a capacitor line down there. There's another capacitor down there. I didn't see that one. Thanks to that booger, we're going to have to replace that one. How'd I miss that? Look at that nasty shit. Get out of here. See? Look at that. I don't know how I missed that. At least originally, that's kind of wild. Goodness gracious. There we go. We got another capture place on there. 16 volt 100. All right. Yeah, I don't know how I didn't see that. That's pretty fun. It's been snuck, snuck up there under those wires. No problemo. Move that back over. That. There we go. Reflow all that.
try to use this, but there we go. There you have it, folks. Looks like everything on that board. Got all that. Yep, 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 yep. Got it all. It's all good. So there's a couple of legs I'm going to trim. That's too. Trim that. There we go. Now this thing can get a cleaning. clean this up we're gonna clean this up and then I'm probably gonna end the stream because I'm gonna have to go do some afternoon errands here and then uh, we'll come back tomorrow and see how this lovely thing is going people love to see the cleaning though right some uh, isopropyl highest percentage I could get I think it's 99. This is just a smaller bottle. I go from my concentrated large bottles into a smaller bottle. Glad the artwork's not coming off. I hate to lose that. This TV is going to be so much happier. Holy moly. How long has it been sitting there with all that dust? All that small bad solder. We're taking care of all that stuff for this thing. It's going to be beautiful. And get it all cleaned up too. It arrived to the shop just in time, you know? Cross those wires at all there. That's good. Focus, focus, focus. I feel like I'm back on the 8 bit Esquire. What the hell happened to the focus? It's autofocus. There! <laughs> oh my gosh, autofocus. Thank you. Alright, we still got some isopropyl on there. There's a new capacitors. Make sure we put them in the right way. Yes, looking good. That'll evaporate down. That's all gonna be good. All right. Cool. All right, guys. 
guys. There we go. I know, right? See his hit, so he's never gonna let that one down. I feel like Roger must have some real serious court case going on right now because I haven't had him actually working on any videos. But that's what happens when people have real jobs. I bet he's got some real important <laughs> case he's working on. He can't make any videos. Charging game stuff. But with. with <laughs> with if it's too expensive or not to be in your collection guys I want to say thank you everybody for being here today it's some awesome uh, activity in the chat and uh, as usual and I had uh, I have to say a special thank you to everybody who definitely gave any kind of a super chat definitely not something that you guys have to do or anything uh, but I do appreciate it. It does help things. And uh, I had a great time today. You know, it was about a normal, uh, a little over an hour show. So um, it's pretty good. Uh, definitely will come back. And um, tomorrow should be good. I don't have any plans not to be here tomorrow. So let's do it and um, come back to the bunker tomorrow. Same bunker time, same bunker channel. There you go, Sensei Dojo. The CRT wizard. What about that? Uh, did anybody see that script? I guess before I get out of here, let me see if I can find that script I found. This is pretty funny. I know some of you guys saw it. I know Belmont saw it. So here's what I did. I was messing around with chat GPT because I was like, well, what could chat B GPT tell me about things like what if I to ask it what it says what is what is the Sony Vega or Vega is actually how you sp pronounce it it's uh so I started messing with it asking it what it thinks of Vega is what and it, so it's giving me some good info so I start telling it first I told it to write a script about the last Sony Vega and it was a real depressing story where somebody was just sitting around, his family was watching their Vega and it burned out. And they went to the store and bought a new one. And they were like, yeah, it's just, it's just the end of them. We got to just throw it away. And I was like, heck no. S no way. That's a boring... So I, I changed it up and I said, write a script about the Sony Vega TV, but the TV gets repaired and saved by Steve. Steve is known as the CRT wizard from Retrotech. <laughs> so that's all I told it. So let's read it. Title, Saving Vega, A Tale of the CRT Wizard. It's daytime. We're inside the interior of a living room. The camera pans across a cozy living room where an old Sony Vega TV sits forlornly in the corner. Its screen flickering intermittently. The family, frustrated by their beloved TV's malfunction, gathers around it with worried expressions. Dun, dun, dun. John, frustrated. I can't believe the Vega is acting up again. It's like it knows when we want to watch our favorite shows. Sarah, with a concerned face. Oh, yes, we can't afford to buy another TV right now, especially with the holidays coming up. Just then, ding dong, the doorbell rings. Interrupting their conversation, John opens the door to reveal Steve, <laughs> a middle-aged middle man with a twinkle in his eye and a toolbox in his hand. Steve cheerfully, greetings, fellow lovers of retro tech. I heard you had a little problem with your Vega. Mind if I take a look? John, skeptical. Are you the repairman we called? Steve grinning. You can call me Steve, but some folks like to call me the CRT wizard. John and Sarah exchange puzzled glances, but step aside to let Steve enter. Steve immediately goes to work, opening up the back panel of the TV and inspecting its inner workings with practiced hands. Later on, inside the living room, Steve tinkers with the components of the Vega TV, occasionally muttering to himself as he diagnoses the issues. The family watches anxiously, unsure if their beloved TV can ever be saved. Emily whispers to Jack, Do you think he can fix it? Jack shrugging, I don't know, but Dad seems to trust him. 
Finally, after what seems like an eternity, Steve closes up the back panel of the TV and steps back, wiping his brow with satisfaction. <laughs> Steve, proudly. There you have it, folks. Your Vega TV is back in action. John is in disbelief. You fixed it? Sarah, amazed. But how? Steve, grinning. Ah, a wizard never reveals his secrets. Let's just say it took a little magic and a lot of love for vintage tech. Oh, goodness. Now what am I doing? I'm missing it up. The family gathers around the TV as Steve turns it on. To their delight, the screen lights up with a vibrant picture better than ever before. Emily excitedly, it's working! Jack, grinning. Thanks, Steve. You're a lifesaver. Steve, humbly, just doing what I love to do, folks. Enjoy your shows, and remember, the CRT wizard is always here to help when you need me. With a wave and a smile, Steve packs up his toolbox and heads for the door, leaving behind a family overjoyed to have their Vega TV back in working order. Fade out, and yes, ladies and gentlemen, that may be the best script AI has ever written. And you have gotten a wonderful little tale to end today's venture to the bunker. Thank you all, folks. Thank you all for being here. Hey, Jose, see you there. <laughs> anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day and a wonderful uh, rest of your week. Hopefully tonight we can all be celebrating. I'll tell you whether I'm happy tomorrow with my team winning a championship or not. So anyway, love you guys. Thank you all again. I'll see you next time tomorrow and have a wonderful day. <laughs>